Uh, if you dissolve all of the cells out of a section of the large artery leaving the heart, what you have left behind is the extracellular matrix and you can see a quite a lot, there's a quite a lot of extracellular matrix even when you dissolve out all of the cells and this is just a magnified view. And this is just the elastin. Now, blood vessels need to be elastic um, because every time the heart pumps it sends a pressure wave through the whole system and if our blood vessels were um, steel pipes we'd be blowing out our brains uh, with pressure waves all the time. So um, the aorta acts as a shock absorber and uh, as we get older and glycation ties together um, collagen fibers and breaks the elastin fibers, uh, it becomes stiffer and stiffer and you've heard of hardening of the arteries. It's a little different than atherosclerosis. The, uh, the tissue is actually getting harder because of the extracellular matrix. So um, uh, sugars, oxygen and enzymes react with the extracellular matrix. They form products which go by the um, technical buzzword advanced glycoxidation end products or advanced glycation end products, uh, abbreviated AGEs uh, to everybody's confusion. Um, and there's also uh, uh, the fats or lipids uh, also undergo similar types of reactions and they produce ALEs. And some of the ALEs and the AGEs are actually the same chemical and I'll show you a, how complicated this is in a moment. Um, there's also cleavage of the protein strands. This is particularly serious with the elastin, which seems to be replenished less, less well than the collagen is. There's also isomerization of the amino acids in the proteins, deamidation, oxi and oxidation. These happen much more slowly than, than um, the glycation and lipoxidation. So if we were to be looking for an escape velocity, we'd work on glycation first and we'd work on this later. Um, consequences I've talked about, stiffer blood vessels, skin tissues and organs, uh, cell matrix interactions, integrin binding receptors signaling inflammation. Um, you get uh, uh, beta amyloids accumulating in the brain and as Stephen Coles mentioned, TTR accumulating in other tissues. Uh, and you get slow turnover of the long-lived proteins. Um, this is a sugar molecule in the bloodstream. This is a protein chain such as a collagen chain and the proteins are made of amino acids. I've just highlighted one of them, lysine, which is very reactive with sugars and they fuse together. It's like welding. It's like chemical welding and you get this longer piece and when you got this longer piece on the protein chain, we call it an adduct and uh, this fir first version is called the shift base and it goes through a number of, of intermediates and eventually you either get this reactive um, AGE called carboxymethylysine which stimulates inflammation and causes a lot of tissue damage or you get binding to another lysine on another protein chain and you get a crosslink that ties the two um, protein chains together and now if you can imagine you're wearing a shirt and it's made out of cloth and it's very flexible and you spill some paint or varnish or something like that on it, some glue, and it gets really stiff because the fibers can't slide past each other. The same thing's happening in our blood vessels and in all of our tissues. The uh, extracellular matrix is getting cross-linked and tied together. There's another cross-link uh, by a different pathway. They all start with sugar and, and protein and it makes another um, Crosslink goes by the name of glucose pain. Um, so, as I mentioned, there are some common uh, end products from the uh, the lipid pathways, the sugar pathways, the protein oxidation pathways, and the glycooxidation pathways. And uh, all of this uh, is described in uh, the book that. Uh, Greg Fahey has edited and I wrote chapter 19 of, so I won't go into detail on this right now. You can read about it later. Um, so there's probably a vicious cycle involved too because if there was something fixing the collagen, the more cross-linked it gets, the harder it is for repair enzymes to get in there and fix it. Still there is hope. Um, this is a chemical that was uh, invented in the mid-1990s. Uh, a company was set up to um, take it through clinical trials called Alteon. They ran out of money, merged with another company and formed a, a company called Synvista. Synvista is running out of money now. And uh, even though I've 
done some experiments with this and I've read a lot of literature about it. I'm totally convinced that this works on one of those two types of crosslinks, the alpha diketone crosslink. Um, it seems to be um, not going further in clinical trials because lack of money by the sponsoring company. There might be some opportunities we can talk about later to buy the intellectual property from that company and take it forward with better management. Um, this is the crosslink, uh, sort of an abbreviated version, but you can see the, these are the two ketone carbon atoms, and these are two catalytic carbon atoms on the allogebrium crosslink breaker, and they interact and separate the crosslink. So now you've restored flexibility, at least for that particular kind of crosslink. However, we have not yet found a crosslink breaker for the glucosepane brand of crosslinks, and this is something that needs to be discovered or developed. And uh, developing or discovering by rational drug design or high throughput screening. Um, and uh, uh, Bill showed us a picture of his high throughput screening uh, operation. This is just a generic robot. Um, and in general, you want to test hundreds of thousands of small molecules, find which ones have some activity against glucose pain. And um, it starts with designing a model crosslink. There's some work going on at Yale right now um, with one of my collaborators. Um, and uh, you use robots because they can do it faster and they can do it more reproducibly. There are some libraries at UCLA, University of Illinois, University of Minnesota, UCSF, Harvard, and some private foundations. Um, uh, and so there's, there are libraries available for rent uh, and the machines are available for rent. And the operators are available for rent, so you don't have to buy all this stuff. You can contract with the, one of these um, high throughput screening groups. Once you identify things that work, we call them lead compounds, then you bring in the medicinal chemists and they modify things um, to improve safety, efficacy, and dosing. Is that uh, five minutes uh, for including questions or? Okay. Um, so, did I press, I pressed the wrong button, sorry. So besides all of that cross-linking we've got going on, um, recently there's been some uh, review publication that indicates that um, elastin is also breaking. And this is an entirely separate problem and it also uh, destroys the elasticity of tissues and, and um, increases the stiffness of blood vessels and skin and everything else. And uh, even with the crosslink breakers, it, it might not save us from the aging of elastin, which uh, seems to be particularly important in the uh, COPD or lung aging. So this, these are the cycles of degradation um, of elastin and fibronectin. And once again, this is um, reproduced in, in chapter 19 of the book that Greg is editing. So I won't go into it in detail here. You can uh, read it when it comes out. Um, so the fibroblasts, the champions that I described earlier, they have two ways of tearing down and replacing extracellular matrix. One is natural, slow, gradual, and very nice. And one is fast and awful. It's called inflammation. Uh, there are um, signals called rages that uh, cause the release of matrix metalloproteinases, MMPs, that dissolve the extracellular matrix. And they do it so rapidly that it doesn't get repaired very well. You get scar tissue and damage. You get arthritis. and um, it, one would wonder why nature would even have this kind of remodeling instead of this kind. Well, if you've got a bacterial infection, maybe you got stabbed by a tree branch or something like that, um, the um, fibroblasts want to open up the extracellular matrix to um, allow the immune cells to get in there rapidly. And uh, so I believe that's why this evolved, but it's not good for us in general if we're not getting stabbed by tree branches covered with bacteria all the time. Um, so we want to enhance this natural replacement and repair. And if we do, oh, so these are just different types of cells that are related to fibroblasts, including fat cells, smooth muscle, cartilage, and bone cells. Um, and uh, 
they have the ability to create new fibers and arrange them properly in place. Because if they're not arranged properly, you've got scar tissue. And everybody knows scar tissue isn't the same as the new stuff. And we'd rather have the new stuff.